From CPRI and the CPRI Knowledge Hub, this is Research Minutes, a weekly look at new and important research in education. Today we look at teacher turnover, a widespread challenge that can carry significant costs, both figurative and literal, for U.S. school districts. We estimated that North Carolina spends, and this is a conservative estimate, on average about $377 million a year on just turnover-related administrative costs. In a new study, the University at Albany's Lucy Sorensen and Duke University's Helen Ladd decided to take a closer look at the so-called hidden costs of teacher turnover, examining impacts on both the composition and the quality of school teaching staff. Sorensen joins CPRI Knowledge Hub Managing Editor Keith Humiller to discuss their findings. Taken together, we think these findings indicate that the average qualifications of teachers decrease following high periods of turnover. And not only are these types of teachers generally less effective on average, but they're also more likely to turn over in the future. And some important takeaways for education policy and future research. I think the main takeaway from our research is that Targeted policies to address teacher turnover specifically should become more of a priority nationally. That's right now on Research Minutes. Hello and welcome to Research Minutes. I'm Keith Humiller, Managing Editor of the CPRI Knowledge Hub. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Lucy Sorensen, Assistant Professor of Public Administration and Policy with the University at Albany. Thanks so much for joining us, Lucy. Thanks so much for having me on the podcast. So today we're going to be discussing your new study, which was co-authored with Duke University's Helen Ladd and recently published in AERA Open, titled The Hidden Cost of Teacher Turnover. Turnover has been examined pretty thoroughly in recent years, specifically in regard to the financial costs that are borne by schools and districts in the form of hiring, training new teachers, things like that. But this study takes a bit of a different tack. In it, you examine the overlooked effects of turnover on both the composition and the quality of a teaching staff. Um, But before we jump in, could you just maybe set the stage for us a little bit? How big of an issue is teacher turnover now, and uh, what kinds of workforce trends have we been seeing as a result? Sure. So one thing to keep in mind is that turnover is not inherently a bad thing. Uh, Some level of teacher turnover within a school is quite natural. However, high levels of teacher turnover, if they're sustained over time, can be very costly. Uh, So according to data from 2013, the overall turnover rate in the U.S. is around 16%. And about half of this is coming from teachers who are switching from one school to another school. And the other half is coming from teachers who leave the profession permanently. And this figure varies quite a bit from state to state and even within states from school to school. So, for example, um, in our study, our sample of middle school math and English language arts teachers in North Carolina turn over at a rate of, on average, 26% each year. But then in high poverty urban schools, they turn over at a higher rate of of 35% each year. And in terms of the the main concerns about turnover in K through 12 education, I think I can lump that into three main categories. So first is that people worry that turnover is problematic to the extent to which it contributes to growing teacher shortages, which have received a lot of attention recently. Uh, Second, there are direct administrative costs to schools and districts. So in an urban district, the costs of recruiting, hiring, and training a replacement teacher might be around $20,000. And then third uh, are costs to student learning. And these can either come in the form of some type of immediate disruption to classrooms, but they can also come in uh, the form of longer term, more nuanced organizational changes within the school which is, is really the focus of our current study. So what was it that led your team to conduct uh, this study in particular? Were there indicators that teacher turnover was having impacts on teacher quality and staff composition, or were there some gaps in prior research that you were trying to fill in? 
so before working before we started working on this study, Professor Ladd and I had written a couple of other articles looking at teachers and teacher policy in North Carolina. And during the course of our conversations with educators and practitioners and policymakers in the state, this issue of teacher turnover kept coming up. And so we knew we wanted to, to look at it. And we actually started out in the current project just doing a straightforward cost analysis. So that was the first thing we did. We estimated that North Carolina spends, and this is a conservative estimate, on average about $377 million a year on just turnover-related administrative costs. And so out of this first very simple cost analysis, we started diving more and more into the issue and became increasingly interested in what we're now calling the hidden costs of teacher turnover or the lasting changes that occur to the composition and quality of, of teaching staff at a school. Uh, so your team conducted an analysis of two decades of administrative data on math and English language arts middle school teachers in North Carolina. Could you give us a general overview of your approach and the scope of your work? Yes. So we're quite fortunate to have access to data from the North Carolina Education Research Data Center. And with this data, we're able to track individual students and individual teachers uh, as they move throughout the school system over long periods of time, as you mentioned, two decades uh, for this particular study. And so the first thing we do is we calculate teacher turnover as the percent of teachers in a given school year in a particular subject who don't return the follow year. And then we take a three-year moving average of this turnover so that, for example, we know the average turnover in, of math teachers in a specific middle school over the past three years. And so it's a more cumulative measure of how often teachers have been turning over in that school. And then our, our empirical approach is that we use models with school and year or sometimes school by year fixed effects to demonstrate how even within the same school, periods of high relative turnover affect net changes in the average qualifications of the teacher workforce. And uh, in your work, you found, among other things, that teacher turnover leads to an increase in the percentage of novice teachers in a school. Now, I'm sure that's not surprising to many of our listeners, but what was surprising to me was the scale of, of those kind of impacts. Could you walk us through what you learned? Absolutely. I'm happy to. So overall, we found that these increases in teacher turnover resulted in a higher proportion of teachers at the school level having less than three years of experience, which, as you mentioned, is perhaps not surprising. Um, but it also led to a higher proportion of teachers that are lateral entry, that are provisionally licensed, or that are teaching outside their subject area of certification. So to give a specific magnitude, if we switch from a school with the lowest turnover rate in our sample to a school with the highest turnover rate in the sample, we're looking at that increasing the proportion of teachers with fewer than three years of experience by around 38 percentage points, which is enormous. Of course, normally the turnover fluctuations that happen within schools are smaller than that, but even a 10 percentage point increase in teacher turnover would have a four percentage point increase in novice teachers, a two percentage point increase in teachers with lateral or provisional licenses, and smaller increases in out-of-subject certification. And so while these magnitudes might sound small on the surface, they are effects on the average qualifications of the entire school workforce. And so it's changing even though they might seem like marginal changes, turnover can really affect the entire group of teachers that are working in that subject in that school. Taken together, we think these findings indicate that the average qualifications of teachers decrease following high periods of turnover. And uh, not only are these types of teachers generally less effective on average, but they're also more likely to turn over in the future. And so it creates this possibility that there could be a cycle of turnover be getting more turnover into the future. And we further find in our results that these reductions in teacher qualifications are largest in schools that are serving economically disadvantaged students and also much larger in schools that are geographically 
further away or more isolated from major teacher preparation programs. And so the idea is that these types of schools might have a harder time attracting high, highly qualified teachers to replace the teachers that, that already departed. And uh, so as other researchers notice, we, we conclude that these costs of turnover are not borne equitably across different types of schools. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, teacher turnover has been and continues to be a significant concern for schools and districts across the U.S. and, and rightfully so. But what do you think policymakers, school leaders, and other stakeholders can take away from the work you've done here? I think the main takeaway from our research is that targeted policies to address teacher turnover specifically should become more of a priority nationally. And this is because teacher turnover doesn't matter only to the extent to which it exacerbates shortages, nor does it seem to matter only for its immediate disruptive effects. Our findings emphasize that when Schools are responding to high teacher turnover. They're forced to make these lasting sacrifices in instructional quality in order to fill a short-term vacancy, for example. So advocating for any specific policy solution falls outside the scope of our study, but we do discuss in the paper two types of strategies that we think might be effective. And the first would be strategies aimed at reducing turnover. So this could be achieved through for example, improving school working conditions, raising the quality of school leadership, or providing differential pay for teachers to remain in harder to staff schools or harder to staff subjects. And then the second type of strategies we think might be effective would be aimed at making schools more resilient to turnover. And these could include efforts to, for example, enhance the teacher pipeline, or efforts to provide strong mentorship programs for early career teachers which would help them quickly adapt to the new school environment. And my last question for you would be, I mean, do you think there are opportunities here for future research, either for for you or for others who are working in this area? I think there are absolutely opportunities for future research. In our paper, as I mentioned, we have to be fairly speculative about actual policy solutions to the turnover problem. Uh, And many of the policy interventions that are targeted currently at either improving school working conditions or retaining teachers in hard to staff schools. I think these interventions still need continued innovation and more rigorous testing of how effective they are at actually reducing turnover. And so there's a lot of great research being done in how schools can better support and keep their best teachers. And I I really look forward to seeing more of it. Well, uh, this is incredible work, Lucy, um, and I want to encourage all of our listeners to go and read the full article. Again, it's titled The Hidden Costs of Teacher Turnover, and it was recently published in AERA Open. Uh, Lucy Sorensen, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about this research, Keith. Thanks for listening to this week's Research Minutes, presented by the CPRI Knowledge Hub. For more episodes of this podcast, or to subscribe to the series, visit us at researchminutes.org. To share your thoughts on today's episode, or to suggest future topics, follow us on Twitter at CPRE Hub. That's C-P-R-E Hub.